It's another week, and there's another Space Science Podcast, and I'm your science communicator, Alex Chirifanos. Thank you for joining us. On this episode, we have some orbital news to get to, since there was a Falcon Heavy launch, as well as an update on the Rocket, Lo- Rocket Lab Make It Rain mission. It was delayed till 12.30 on the night, the day we're recording this podcast, so uh, we'll update you on that later. But to start, I want to do something to get us thinking about the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. <laughs> Yes, leading up to the 50th, we're going to touch on some part of the space race that was influential as I make my way through Chasing the Moon and Apollo's Legacy. You can find the links to both those books in this week's episode page at todayinspace.net. They'll be in the show notes as well if you'd like to pick those up. This week, I want to recite a chunk of JFK's speech in Houston, Texas at Rice University. This was the speech with the famous line, We choose to go to the moon. On September 12th, 1962, I haven't really nailed down my JFK accent quite yet, and I don't want to do a different Boston accent, so I may spontaneously go into an accent. You've, you've been warned. Got my transcript here. President Pitzer, Mr. Vice President, Governor, Congressman Thomas, Senator Wiley, and Congressman Miller, Mr. Webb, Mr. Bell, scientists, distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your president for having me an honorary visiting professor, and I assure you that my lecture will be very brief. I am delighted to be here, and I'm particularly delighted to be here on this occasion. We meet at a college noted for knowledge, in a city noted for progress, in a state noted for strength, and we stand in need of all three. For we meet in an hour of change and challenge, in a decade of hope and fear, in an age of both knowledge and ignorance, The greater our knowledge increases, the greater our ignorance unfolds. I've been listening to it a lot. Despite the striking fact that most of the scientists that the world has ever known are alive and working today, despite the fact that this nation's own scientific manpower is doubling every 12 years in a rate of growth more than three times that of our population as a whole, despite that, The vast stretches of the unknown and the unanswered and the unfinished still far outstrip our collective comprehension. No man can fully grasp how far and how fast we have come, but condense, if you will, and I love this example because this is uh, an example that Neil deGrasse Tyson has done on Cosmos, but they took it to the next level, but it's it's cool to see that this is kind of where, I guess, this started. So... But condense, if you will, the 50,000 years of man's recorded history in a time span of but a half century. Stated in these terms, we know very little about the first 40 years, except at the end of them, advanced man had learned to use the skins of animals to cover them. Then about 10 years ago, under this standard, man emerged from his caves to construct other kinds of shelter. Only five years ago, man learned to write and use a chart, use a cot with wheels. Christianity began less than two years ago. The printing press came this year, and less than two months ago, during this whole 50-year span of human history, the steam engine provided a new source of power. Newton explored the meaning of gravity. Last month, electric lights and telephones and automobiles and airplanes became available. Only last week did we develop penicillin, television, and nuclear power. And now, if America's new spacecraft succeeds in reaching Venus, we will have literally reached the stars before midnight tonight. This is a breathtaking pace. And such a pace cannot help but create new ills as it dispels old. New ignorance, new problems, new dangers... Surely the opening vistas of space promise high costs and hardships, as well as high reward. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are little longer to rest. But this city of Houston, this state of Texas, this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. This country was conquered by those who moved forward. And so will space. I'm closing up here. This is the last, the last section. William Bradford, speaking in 1630 of the founding of the Plymouth Bay Colony, said that all great and honorable actions are accompanied with great difficulties, and both must be enterprised and overcome with answerable courage. 
If the capsule history of our progress teaches us anything, it is that man, in his quest for knowledge and progress, is determined and cannot be deterred. This exploration of space will go ahead, whether we join in it or not. And it is one of the great adventures of all time. And no nation which expects to be the leader of other nations can expect to stay behind in the race for space. You know, the great thing about this speech that I was reading up on is that it was a team effort to write this speech. Many of the most brilliant minds of the time in the space industry were helping to add their perspective. And it's funny, I know, I know I'm guilty of, the, of this, but I always thought presidents wrote their own speeches for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, and, and then I learned that there was a speechwriter or two involved. And now to learn that all these people were involved in writing one of the most epic space speeches of all time it seems pretty incredible and rare, a rare moment for sure. But even rarer was having a president that was passionate about the space program and was able to inspire you with his own voice and style. I read the actual written version, and it's not the same as his audio. The transcript I picked for this episode uh, is from the actual transcription of the way Kennedy said it. And that's evidence for me that Kennedy really cared about the space pro program. He added his own flair to the speech. You know, after doing this podcast for so long and reading scripts, I can tell when someone is reading one. And he, you can see that he's com comfortably adding his own flair to the speech without losing the meaning of the speech. You know, and sometimes people will veer off course when they're, they're talking about things, and I've done it too. And, and you can tell they either forgot what they were thinking about or talking about, and, or they end up making no sense. Something just doesn't sound right. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is because it's so important for a space program that wants to progress and do great things to have support from a variety of places, politically, economically, socially, and I'm sure more places. Without it, a 10-year plan like the Apollo program with Mercury and Gemini programs as testing grounds, it's the only way it's possible. Otherwise, it, the space program is just going to get submerged in nonsense and bureaucracy and political discourse. And this is what makes the Apollo 11 achievement even more insane and outrageous that it actually happened. Like for the next, literally for the next few weeks, we're, we're going to keep continuing this. I'm going to do the other parts of the speech uh, as we lead up to the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing on July 16th of this year. But it, it's still, it's still just a, a complete <sighs> insane, insane thing that they did. Uh, and it's been fun relearning about it. So now let's transition over to some orbital news. <laughs> To begin, let's talk about the latest Falcon Heavy launch for SpaceX, which is the third Falcon Heavy launch so far. This mission, STP-2, had multiple payloads for multiple missions and was essentially a rideshare launch opportunity. There were 24 satellites across five different missions from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, NASA, the DOD's research laboratories, and university research projects. As far as some reusability stats, the Falcon Heavy has a recovery rate of 7 of 9, which if you're a Star Trek Voyager fan, is pretty amazing. Uh, the two failures have been two separate center core rockets. This last launch, the center core was unable to land safely on the drone ship. The two side boosters landed successfully and were reused from the previous Falcon Heavy launch Sat 6A. I still have a launch hangover from the first Falcon Heavy night launch, even though I missed the broadcast live due to the delay. It ended up going past midnight on the East Coast, and I didn't realize it until the next morning when I was wondering why, but at 2.30 in the morning on the East Coast, my cell phone was going bzz, 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 because Every time they launched and had a milestone in the mission, SpaceX would tweet it. So this app that gives me updates, there's there's at least 24 messages and vibrations for the delivery of all the satellites into orbit, never mind all the other things about the mission. But I can't blame SpaceX for that. I can, however, blame myself for my actual hangover from a wedding, uh, which was amazing and wonderful. Some college friends got married this weekend. But that, that's on me. 
that's on me. Just like the notifications on my phone for the night launches, maybe next time I'll just put on airplane mode or something. <laughs> the Planetary Society's Light Sail 2, a project started by previous president Carl Sagan, Bill Nye is now the current president and helped fund the project with Kickstarter. I was a backer, so I get updates from time to time. Here is a bit from the update after the Falcon Heavy launch. Some 80 minutes after liftoff, LightSail 2's mothership, Prox-1, was successfully deployed. The next benchmark for our mission will come exactly seven days after initial deployment on July 2nd, the day this will come out, when Prox-1 will deploy LightSail 2. The mission team, which will gather at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, will then assess the state of the spacecraft in preparation for expected deployment of the solar sails on or about July 7th. So we will keep you updated on the progress of the mission. If you'd like to learn more about Solar Sail 1, the original mission, head over to todayinspace.net and search for Solar Sail to find those episodes. We've talked a lot about that before and talked about the science behind how the light sail actually works. Uh, Rocket Lab's Make It Rain mission also successfully launched. While it was delayed a few times, it all worked out in the end. The New Zealand startup delivered multiple payloads in a rideshare opportunity to orbit, like the Falcon Heavy, but with smaller payloads for a company called Black Sky, a CubeSat for the Melbourne, Melbourne space program, and a pair of Prometheus satellites for the U.S. Special Operations Command. A big congrats to Rocket Lab and Peter Beck. I'm looking forward to the launch complex in Wops Island in Virginia later this year where they'll be able to get up to a uh, potential monthly launch rate, which will be very fun. And that brings us to the end of this week's episode. So thank you for joining us here at Today in Space. Uh, in the U.S., we are celebrating Independence Day, a holiday I'm rather fond of and a holiday we celebrate in the podcast pretty regularly. I am a big fan of independence and personal freedom, so this day is a big deal for me, especially as a second-generation Greek American still close enough to my ancestry to understand what it's like without freedom. So if you're interested in hearing my previous thoughts on independence, feel free to search on todayinspace.net or your podcast player for independence. As for this year, my thoughts go to just how much independence is a balance of discipline and freedom. In fact, there are the two are so intertwined that it's funny that they aren't the same thing in retrospect, obviously. I've been trying to get this podcast to be weekly for about basically five years, and not for a lack of trying either. But what I've learned, however, is that it was mental discipline that I was lacking, uh, not, not work discipline. You know, I could work very hard, but uh, if I'm not working in the right way, then, you know, just... It's going to take a lot longer. So maybe I should have paid attention more to Yoda's advice. But seriously, it really it's really what it comes down to. Over the past five years, I was learning how to podcast. And, and most of the time, I was creating a lot. Uh, I was creating a very dense show that required a lot of energy on my part uh, to actually get it up and running. So much so that it would take up more free time than I really had and still was too much to do weekly. I left my job to go do it full time and, and to focus, but I, I wasn't focused. I had a lot of ideas and wasn't very confident in myself. While I still need to work on my confidence, I have started to focus. I meditate every morning. I have a notebook with me to write down ideas and things that need to get done. And I'm balancing a full-time job, this podcast, and AG3D printing. While I'm nowhere near perfect, and boy, do I still need work, I am finally at a point where I'm confident in my own abilities because I have discipline. That ritual is there for the days when I fall off the wagon or get sidetracked by the stress of life throw or, or just life throwing something at me. I always thought you just decided to get disciplined one day, and that's not true. You have to put the work in, and independence and freedom, it's the same. You you have to put the work in to have your freedom, and you need to give something of yourself to get that. If it means less TV, video games, or nights out, and more of doing the things I love, then it's worth it. I Really hope that you have a wonderful week. Enjoy yourself celebrating the holiday. If you're in Europe, stay cool and safe and enjoy your time off this time of year because Europe does that right. Uh, everyone goes on vacation regularly. That's very nice. Uh, 
Uh, we could definitely do more of that here. Uh, we definitely need that. Uh, but don't forget, as we close it up here, don't forget you can get a free audiobook and trial by going to audibletrial.com slash today in space. Get a free quote on your next 3D printing project with us at AG3D Printing, my idea workshop where we bring your ideas into reality, leveraging 3D printing and design services. You can check out our website at ag3d-printing.com. You can check us out on Instagram to see what cool stuff we're making right now at ag3d printing. You can follow the podcast at Today in Space Pod on Twitter and Instagram, uh, Today in Space Podcast on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to us if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and uh, Spotify. That's right, finally. And Finally, make sure to contact us and let us know what you want us to cover on this podcast of all things space science. Reach out to us on social media, email todayinspacepodcast at gmail.com or in the comments below. Until next week, be good, spread love, and spread science. Here's to a fantastic future. Happy Independence Day.